The usual business meeting. That's all it was. So my day began like any other day. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Enjoy yourself while you're still in the pink. The years go by as quickly as a wink. Enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Okay, maybe things weren't so simple. One of the things for me is I've, I'm a big fan of like wuxia novels and films. And traditionally in those stories, you have a gathering of these warriors and they tend to tend to be in like a tea house out in the desert someplace or something along those lines where it's very isolated and they share about the past and they talk about the future and the whole idea for Far Away Eyes sort of came from that where we took our, our warriors, our assassins and put them in a hotel suite in modern day Hong Kong and uh, that whole genre is something that always kind of fascinated me. For me as an actor it was a challenge of doing a role that was going to take place in one room. So that to me, I think it was the challenge, the challenge as an actor to find things that are interesting and still make it suspenseful and, you know, kind of find all those nooks and crannies to make it interesting in one room. Right. So don't cross the frame. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Like that. You know, when I first heard the movie, you know, it was described as Hitman and so immediately you think of action and when it comes to action movies, the character is usually the last thing thought of. And in this case, it was reversed. There was, you know, the character, the character was at the forefront and the action was, was definitely secondary. It was all on the page, you know? It's a beautiful script and it's all right there. I didn't think beyond the script. I played the role of Eli, who was sort of the teacher, the guru to these uh, three assassins. He has this father quality but at the same time, can be vicious and mean. So the nice thing is, is that I didn't have to have that vicious and mean part. I only got the nice quality from him. The movie's about the conflict between all of them. Can we talk now? I'll take that as a yes. Where is she? So I play Marcus Nang, and, um, Basically, Marcus is, is an ex-hitman, and he is contemplating, or he's walking that kind of gray area about what he wants to do uh, with his life. And he's, he's spent a lot of years being a contract killer, and uh, he's at a crossroads. Well, I play the role of Cordelia, and she's basically caught in between a job and the realization that her relationship with Marcus is coming to a head now. So it's a, it's a bittersweet ending for, for her in this piece. What is your problem? What's my problem? Yeah, what's your problem? It's two years, get over it. How many times do you want me to apologize? If you think all of this is because I want an apology, you're sadly mistaken. William Lee is a dear friend and one of the most wonderful guys I've ever met. Such a pleasure to work with. Always there for you to bounce, bounce off ideas, listens. I mean, it's such a, such a wonderful thing to have when two actors can really communicate with each other and you really feel that it's a, a give and take as opposed to just a one-sided relationship. Oh, you're so stubborn! Yeah, this is our second time working together, and I hope it won't be the last because he has holds a special place in my heart, and I, it's been it's been great seeing him every day. He's not here today, so I'm a little depressed. <laughs> A 
along with our four main characters, there's actually uh, a fifth character, and that would be the hotel suite itself, the Sham Shui Hotel. Uh, Sham Shui means uh, deep water, which for me really kind of sums up the situation that Marcus is in. Now inside this hotel suite, we were going for sort of a 1970s feel, and, and they just did a tremendous job in terms of creating a, a look that's sort of out of time, but uh, still kind of hanging on in, in the modern world. Here in particular, this room, which is the basis for the majority of the picture, this has been totally recreated in an abandoned villa. We found this place that uh, was, there was nothing in here. Everything that you see was brought in uh, by our production designer and his crew, and they just did a phenomenal job. I think Will can attest to what this place looked like. And yeah, it looked like a really bad apartment in North Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> the set design plays an important role because it really comments and, and, and reflects on the characters in the story. For example, in the dining room scene we have behind Marcus is this screen and this mask and uh, a number of things that comment on his character. Be and another example would be behind Eli, you've got an arch, a big arch that kind of symbolizes uh, an emperor's throne or his power of authority. So there's bits and pieces and like that throughout. I was just in my uh, my my kill of death. It's the first time I get shot in in the movie, and so I dart to save Eli to give him his uh, pills, and I end up getting shot by Chase in the arm, and there's the explosion, and literally blood goes everywhere, and uh, I go down. It's <laughs> just really great. Well, I consulted our, our, our stuntman, Jack, to find out exactly what it feels like to get shot, because I have never gotten shot. And he just basically told me to, to think like if someone has punched me in the arm. And, you know, I think that the love that I have for Eli is my, my, my vehicle to propel me to just, doesn't matter about me anymore, and go save for him. And there I was. <laughs> the key thing is to make it organic in the way that visceral, what we've been doing over here. It's not too, not too fancy. Not too fancy. Yeah. It is different. The, the, the bit, there is a, there's a lot of differences, and I gotta say that working with the Hong Kong crew is probably one of my most favorite experiences. Well, I love filming in Hong Kong. It's the first time I've done it. Of course, you know. Hong Kong crews and Hong Kong films are sort of legendary in the States. So it was an experience I was really looking forward to. And they're fantastic. They're three times faster than any crew I've ever worked with. Oh, catch up! That's right! <laughs> <laughs> fast. And um, it's interesting to see so many, like, so many crew members, like, the the size of a crew is so much smaller, you know, here in Hong Kong, and it's you see people who have who do two or three or four different things. Um, whereas in the states, you'll see one person for this and one per person for that. So the crew grows, and it takes a little bit longer to shoot. In Faraway Eyes, all the action is driven by story, and all that builds and sets the stage for asking the ultimate question: What is the price of love? I guess love does that to a person makes them feel, makes them lost, makes them do things they wouldn't ordinarily do. Is love worth dying for? If there's any dying tonight, I'll decide who. Well, there is love in the movie, and people die in the movie. So, you kind of just 
just have to see the movie. We're all against him. And, uh, it's very sad. But lots of action. Explosions are going off, blood's flying, right? Ninja stars, no, no ninja stars. That's the sequel. <laughs> Far away ears. <laughs> We've been having a lot of fun here in Hong Kong. It's been great. Yeah. I think it's been great. Yeah. It's been great. So the Let's do it again sometime. <laughs> All right, thank you. Why don't we get back in there and kick each other's ass? All right. Let's do it. Thank you. <laughs> That's the movie. And we just stare at each other longingly. Because he has faraway eyes. <laughs>